Hello everybody and welcome back to the Limit of Adhesion and a brand new season of open wheeler racing. This is season four. My name's Gareth and joining me once again in commentary is Jules. Jules, how are you doing? Uh, great, thanks. Uh, excited to see a new season of the open wheelers and seeing how the drivers you know, adapt to the new car. Absolutely, yeah, and let's talk about that new car then. It's the Dallara F317 chassis, which was launched in 2017, an evolution of the old F3112, which was actually one of the most popular junior single-seaters cars of all time. Powered by a variety of engines, including Mercedes, VW, Toyota and Honda, has a six-speed semi-automatic gearbox, 240 brake horsepower and a 580 kilo car. So it's pretty powerful, isn't it? Yeah, they're looking a bit more powerful, more powerful than uh, than the FR2 that they had last season. Looking for a few seconds in lap time improvement. Indeed, yeah. And let's take a look at the grid then. David Lyon on pole from Rob Miller, so same old from last season. Richard Santana showing well in third. Oliver Walker showing really well in fourth as well. Then we've got Gavin Kelly in fifth. Uh, looking further down, Josh Kanema from the ETM then in seventh with Merrin Hoogevin in eighth. Ninth is Winslow from the ETM. Chris White in tenth. Roberto Costa in 11th and Jason Larson in 12th. Slightly shortened grid due to some other sporting yeah, event look, taking place. No idea what that was. Yeah, no, indeed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's the lights going red then. Lights going green. We are racing at Interlagos. It's a first visit for the single seaters at Interlagos. So it's exciting to see what happens here. We're racing down to turn one then. And into the centre S, there's line in the lead. Ahead of Santana, who's jumped Miller then. Yeah, and squabbling going on down further down the grid. There's Winslade uh, and his teammate. Indeed, yeah. So, Kelly up to fourth then, ahead of Garlic. So, looks like Oliver Walker's missed out. He's dropped all the way down to ninth. Here yeah, they're they come on the inside in. of Santana there. Yeah, on his round. That's unfortunate. And that looks like Kelly got involved with that as well. That's a big shame. Some of the big hitters then already involved in a opening lap accident. Winslade now up to fourth then as they come into Ferradura. We're looking at Kelly then in the Super Aguri. Who's that? Is that Garlic getting it wrong? And No, I think it's Winslade. What? Look, he's dropping it's back Winslade. down the order. Oh, look, there he is off the grid. Yeah, I was just looking at Garlic locking up. So oh, That's a shame because Win- it was a great start from him. Yeah, Winslade's made an awful start. Dropped all the way down to 15th then. Kelly's already back up to fifth, though. This is move yeah. he's making on Hugovin there. So we've got lots of new liveries then, which is going to make it a little tricky while we get used to them. There's Roberto Costa in his uh, home race livery, the, the yellow and green of the Brazilian flag. So nice to see that car on the grid. And here they come up the hill then to complete lap one. Line in the lead. Looks There's like Hugovin. he's got a great run on white here. Yeah, so... Chris White and Chris Forrest are making up the new CC Racing team. They're in the black and red cars. Then we saw a Jägermaster getting involved there as well. Here they come through the centre S and it was that crash we were hearing in the background there. There's someone on the grass there. That's one of the MMPRs then. That's the ledge then. Oh, and he just waits there. I thought it was going to be an unsafe recovery. There goes his teammate in the gold and green car. And Oliver Walker back up to fourth then after that slow start where he fell all the way down to ninth. Yeah, it looks like a few drivers making some mistakes. Got a replay here. Yeah. So, so this is Chris Forrester and Keith Schooling then. Oh, that's uh, two into one. Don't go in the middle of the track there. That's unfortunate to see. And that's Keith getting going again in the new shelf squirrel livery. So an evolution of last year's design, which is nice. It looks like he's got damage and must have been towed. There's his teammate then in the white and blue car being chased by Winslade from the ETM. Pride of Wales. Pride of Wales indeed. That's a fantastic new livery courtesy of Gavin Kelly then. And look at that then. Uh, Weaver just letting them through there rather than fighting it. And that was uh, Chris White going through from the CC Racing team. James Garlick in a white and blue BMW style uh, Williams livery as opposed to the classic white, yellow and blue he said it didn't really work on this uh, Dallara F3 car yeah absolutely pretty, he's looking pretty lacking, looking um, livery yeah lacking sponsors though I think yeah yeah could probably do it with a few sponsors then <laughs> and who's he being chased by then 
Garlic being chased by Josh Kanamer, who's up into P3 at the moment. And Yeah, good pace showing from those two. They're not that far off line. He's in the lead. He's got an excellent start, untroubled, um, but he isn't, he's not that far ahead. No. Fastest lap, only two tenths faster than Garlic and Namath behind him. On board with Josh Kanen as we come through Ferradura. Turns five and six, and then this is where the track starts getting very tight with these second gear corners. Got to be very patient on the turning through here. That we nail the throttle up to the duck's beak. The Pico de Pato, one of my favourite names of F corners <laughs> in F1. <laughs> so let's talk about some of the new teams. Then we've got CC Racing, which is Chris White and Chris Foss Forrester. No surprises where they got their team name from. And Team MMPR, which is The Ledge and Jake Weaver teaming together. Now, I've heard a rumour, Jules, that The Ledge was fired from Team Jägermeister for not getting off with a stag on a team building exercise. Is that correct? I couldn't possibly comment. <laughs> I think you'd need to speak to someone from Jägermeister about that. Absolutely. We should check in with Jason Larson, then team manager from team Jägermeister and the Otto esports racing team Merrin Hugovin and Roberto Costa very excited to see what that team can do Merrin's been showing very strongly since he joined the league in the back end of last season yeah we couldn't really keep him off the podium could we no indeed Here we see one of the that's uh, Chris White isn't it in a battle with uh, Jason Weaver yeah and that's wrong footed him and allowed uh, other Weaver to get on him yeah, Father and son cooperation there, I think. <laughs> Very nice stuff indeed. And we've got a few movers then, as you say. So the ledge moving to the new team MMPR. And Richard Santana has moved to take his place at Team Jägermeister, which is a great signing for, for the Jägermeister team. Yeah, Although absolutely. He's ha having a difficult race at the moment, though. You can see down in 15th place at the moment. Such a shame after being so far up the grid at the start, but he had that unfortunate collision with uh, Miller in Turn 4 on the opening lap. You've got to imagine this is going to be a drop result. He's, he showed well at the uh, end of the FR2 season, and you've got to say he's going to be up there fighting for wins and podiums. Well, I, I've got him down as being one of my championship contenders, actually, as well, yeah. I mean, he only learned the Formula Renault to join the limits of Etesian. This is the car he normally races, so yeah, I'm expecting to see big things from him. Here we Absolutely. see Oliver Walker then, and Gavin Kelly, both of those showing very strongly when we had a test race of the F3 at Okiyama, of probably about two, three months ago now, feels like a long time. Yeah, yeah. no, time has no meaning anymore, um, but yeah, uh, Kelly's on the attack here. Well, they went through the DRS sign there, but both of these guys, yeah, they're showing very strongly and I'm expecting good things from them. That's a great move by Kelly, though, getting the job done into Lake Descent Corner Turn 4. And here they go through 5, hard on the power, then up to Ferradura. It's Walker fighting back. He's thinking better of it. Yeah, just going to follow, follow and stay behind at the moment. So Kelly back up to P4 then. So Walker's thinking of the long game here. It's now the same format for the um, the open wheelers as we have in the GT3s. So this is a 25-minute feature race with a enforced pit stop due to lack of fuel, followed by a sprint race with an inverted grid of the top 12. So I imagine Walker's just thinking, well, we've got plenty of this race left to go. Let's just see what happens. Yeah, it's great. Oh, look at that then. One of the uh, CC racing cars arriving sideways in the middle of the track. Then that's Chris White. Yeah, he didn't manage to hit anyone, not like I think it was Burnett, didn't he? Last season in the GT3s, he managed to yeah, snook a windslade by uh, <laughs> firing off of the grass. Yeah, that was a crazy accident. Meanwhile, then, Lyon setting fastest lap after fastest lap, then a new best from him, 129.2, but again, Garlic only two tenths off behind. Well, yeah, the three chasers only two or three tenths off behind, aren't they? Yeah, this is exciting. Where's, where's Lyon gone? Lyon just blinked out of existence, and he's out of the race. Oh yeah, that seems permanent. He's dropping. That's got to be an internet issue then. Oh, what a shame then. He was, I mean, he was cruising at the front, wasn't he, really? Putting in those amazing lap times, which has promoted James Garlic then into the lead of the race. And could he be on for his second victory in the LOA? So the leader's now Garlic, name of Kelly now on the podium. Oliver Walker, we're on board with him. He's in P4. His teammate Adam Highfield sadly missing from this race. 
Yeah, also, um, I believe, watching some significant event. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to say, Garlic's got the pace to win this. Uh, it's he just going to be a case of the strategy and not making any mistakes. Yeah, very excited to see how the strategy works. And now, some of the drivers, I presume, will be using Crew Chief, which will just fill their car up to make sure that it gets to the end of the race. Some of them will be doing it manually and trying to calculate the fuel that they need on the fly, which will be quite tricky to do. Yeah, it's useful to have a flexible strategy um, so that you can come in a bit early or a bit late, depending on the traffic. Um, some, some people might already have a planned one with a window, or they might just be, as you say, on the fly, going until they run out and then adding what they reckon will uh, get them to the end. Yeah. But for the drivers who are just doing the F3 Championship, this is going to be a step into the unknown for them, whereas the drivers who are doing both GT3 and F3 will have a slight advantage in that they're used to doing some of this stuff. Yeah, already. you'd hope that the um, the open wheeler drivers that don't do the GT3 had watched the videos because it's been very effective, especially for a, a certain Mr. Fuelgrave um, in the GT3, doing... Uh, Staying out longer and, and pumping in fast laps and then getting the jump on those that he's been behind. He's, uh, he's, he's used the fuel stops to perfection. He has indeed, but then he always carries a litre of fuel in his pants, as we well know. <laughs> so, uh, the action magnet Nathan Parker, he's joined uh, Stupid Aguri at the tail end of last season. Sadly not in this race, but I understand he will be racing in the team livery this season. He was uh, using a variety of liveries last year. Yeah, Last hopefully season. he's settled down to the one now and he will uh, hopefully be at the next round. Absolutely. Yeah, and talking of the next round then, what a stupendously good season we've got ahead of us then. Some amazing tracks. So obviously we're at Interlagos for this race, but then we will be going to Barcelona and then to Imola, Nürburgring, Montreal, Donington, Hockenheim, Alton Park, Spa, Monza, Suzuka and finishing the season at Bathurst. I mean, that's an incredible calendar, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. I can't wait to see all those tracks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Replay it's like Chris White then. Oh, he did super well just to control that and bring it back to the track so well. Oh, very good work indeed. Cutting back to the action, and there's James Garlic still in the lead of this race, being chased by Namath, though. It's only 1.5 seconds behind. Yeah, I imagine he'd think of it's a little bit close. Not he's not that comfortable. No. It's a great car to drive as well. Quite uh, as we saw with Chris White, it, relatively easy to catch when the car's back end starts moving on the limit compared to the Formula Renault, which would generally just if you felt the back end stepping out too far, you were probably gone, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, it's for, it's more forgiving, and you can put your foot down a bit better on it. Um, so hopefully that will give uh, our drivers the confidence to race closer. Yeah, as Mistake we saw. from Garlic there, and Namus is closing quite rapidly. Yeah. And it looks like Ollie, and, uh, Ollie Walker and Kelly are also closing in, so this might be a four-way battle soon. And here's David Line then, rejoining the race in 16th place and a lap down. I guess so he must have fed the hamsters, got them back to work. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. He must be so angry with that, though, because he was driving a storming race. Yeah, yeah. Um, points go down to 15th place now, so he's currently out of the points, but he might be looking to try and unlap himself from schooling and maybe try and get back uh, back into the points. Yeah, good point. So, we, uh, yeah, new point structure for this season then. So, uh, good to have more points on offer for the drivers. And That was a mistake, wasn't it? That's Namath taking the lead. Wow, Namath, yeah, great move. I was almost just, uh, I was sort of wondering why he was going so slowly. Yeah, Garlic must have made a mistake then. And Josh Kanemuth into the lead of the race for the first time in his LOA career. This is awesome stuff. And that's Kelly, top four covered by just under three seconds. Yeah, Kelly only 1.9 off then. And closing, you'd have to say closing in. There he is. And there's Ollie Walker behind him. So the four of them are heading for a, a fantastic scrap at the front of the field then. Here we go. We are 13 minutes into this 25 minute race then. And when do you think they're going to start pitting for uh, fuel? 
they can get quite far, I think, from my calculations. Um, so it'll be up to them, but you're probably going to be... Oh, there's someone That's going Namath. in now. That's Namath. Namath's gone in. Our, our race leader, Joshka Namath, is pitting now. That's quite early then. Lap 10 of 17. He's in they the pits. They've been trying to divide the, the race almost in half then, maybe. Um, I was going to say they're probably about three laps short on a, on a, fuel t a full tank, three or four tops. So, you know, you would expect them to win at latest in the next three laps. Yeah, a real splash and dash then. So there's Winslade in the second ETM, promoted to sixth because of his teammate's stop. And here's Joshka coming out now. 7.4 stationary, 29 in the pits. Now, is that good or bad? We don't know yet. That's the first one we've had, I think. So, because obviously yeah. Lions pit stop was several minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that wasn't a fuel stop. Meanwhile, then, is it Richard Santana? Here he is then, attacking the ledge as they come down the main straight. He's gone to the inside. And I think the ledge saw that one coming and uh, and just sort of made it a bit easier because Santana just had the move done already, didn't he, really? Yeah, textbook onto the brakes on the inside line. Yeah. As we say, someone that we are expecting to be a championship leader this season. Oh, Lesh fighting back then as they come to Lake Descent. He had a look, but thought better of it as that gap was always going to close. Yeah, and that was probably an off-track there. He won, ran a bit. You've got to be so careful on that curb because it's uh, one of iRacing's stricter limits is on that exit curb of there. Are you not allowed to look at that curb? No. So, James Garlic back into the lead of this race then. Her fourth Her place is pitting. Uh, Hugovin. Merrin Hugovin, yeah, here he comes then. And confusingly, he's in a... Well, that's, that's an up-to-date Williams livery, isn't it? Yeah, I thought Otto, Team Otto Esports had their own livery. Uh, oh, another mistake. Oh, look at that. Kel wow. Garlic then made a mistake. Kelly's through into the lead. I think that's pretty much a carbon copy of what he did previously given where Namath passed him last time. Yes, yes, you're absolutely right. Yeah, and there's Oliver Walker then through into second place then, so he's recovering nicely from, despite his uh, early lap one problems, he's uh, back into second place now from fourth on the grid. Winslow's up to fifth as he's not pitted yet. He's running good pace actually, look at that, 29.7. Yeah, that's not too shabby at all. Definitely a car that probably suits him a bit better than the uh, than the FR2. Yeah, yeah I would going, say so. Going back to Oliver's uh, start, actually, isn't that one of the, the main considerations for the F3 is getting it off the line. It's a lot harder to get off the line compared to the Formula Renault from a standing start. Very easy to get a lot of wheel spin and pitch it into the wall, as we've seen. Look at that then. James Garlick coming into the pits then from third for his mandatory stop. Yeah, well, it has more power, so it's a bit more... Yeah. You've got to be a bit easier on the on the foot, on the right foot. It seems to be a feature of the uh, of the official races that we've seen. Every start that I've yeah. seen of uh, the Formula 3 on iRacing just seems to involve a massive pile-up <laughs> where everyone goes <laughs> sideways. <laughs> <laughs> so, James Garlic on the pit exit then, in fifth place now. So he went to lap 11. Obviously, Namath went to lap 9 and Hugovin 10. And Namath now ahead of him. He was ahead, obviously, just before the stop, but that's, uh, that's interesting to see there. Namath now in 5th place, Garlic in 6th, Winslade up to 4th, but yet to stop, as is Kelly Walker and... Is that Roberto Costa, then? <coughs> yeah, yeah, imagine. Yeah, that's right. Walker's hanging on to Kelly, isn't he? I mean, Kelly caught and passed him pretty easily, but he hasn't got away. No, no, this is exciting stuff. And who's that's just gone in the pits then? That's Eric... Uh, the ledge is now in the pits then. For his stop. As here come the leaders to complete another nap. Now, are they going to go into the pits? It's hard to tell, because they do use the pit entry as the as right. the racing line. No, they both staying out. another one. New personal best for Walker there. And it's a temp quicker than Kelly ahead. Got to be so patient trying to wait for the nose to turn in as you go into the centre S before you nail the throttle through the next two apexes. There's traffic up ahead of them. 
Yeah, look who it is. It's Line. Wow. And uh, and the ledge. Not what you expect to see, Will. Yeah. Here's name of and garlic then. So the question is, what's the gap? 23, 24 seconds from Kelly and Walker ahead who are yet to stop. Is that a pit stop's length of time? I think we're soon about to find out. Yeah, this is quite intriguing, actually. Uh, Joska's last lap, 130.431, so it's nearly a second off his best, and really, this is the time you want to be running your best. See Santana in the pits then from 10th place. <clears throat> yeah, I imagine they wouldn't have elected to change tyres because the tyres take about four laps to get up to sp speed, and you'll just lose so much time if you pit first, if you do yes, that. Uh, and from testing, it seemed that at least here... The tyres were not losing any performance over these races. They they just had so much grip left. Yeah, and we see the two ETM cars running side by side. And here is Kelly then. He's into the pits, followed by Walker. So both of them in the pits at the same time. Kelly nicely on the limiter then for this crucial stop then for both these drivers. And in fact for name of and Garlic, who are running fifth and sixth currently. This is the battle for the lead, then. Oh, Costa also has come in from third. Yeah. And let's not forget that he's also in this fight. Kelly's gone first. So they were stationary three seconds. What's happened here? Kelly's just made a mistake in the pit lane. Yeah, Too eager on the way. power. Just suddenly pulled it over to the fence, but he's got going again now. But Walker's got a great run on him as they come out of the pits. Don't but cross the white line, Ollie. He's done it. But they he's both jumped the Namath. Yes. Wow, so critical stop then. And Kelly's one run wide again in T4 then. That's... That's wow. like Walker through. Walker's taken the lead then. A crucial double error from Kelly then has just gifted the lead to Oliver Walker and a superior strategy, you'd have to say, by Kelly and Walker has just deposed Namath and Garlic behind them. Yeah, yeah. That's, I just I was I, when you saw that happening, I was just looking at the pit stop time, and I think their stops were three seconds quicker than Namath's, which would explain how they jumped him. Well, but did he take did he take tires then? Maybe he did. It's possible, but it Is might it? have just been like a fuel thing. He might have put more in. Yeah, look, you can see they were three seconds quicker than him, and a second quicker than Garlic in the stop. Yeah. In fact, I think that uh, so Weaver and the two Weavers actually must have been practicing their stops. They had the fastest. 4.3 seconds and 4.4 seconds and that's put them in 8th and ninth place then so a great showing from the two weavers then Walker defending there a bit early I don't think Kelly's close enough to do anything yet no well no, it's, like... it's battle again but the order has swapped for these top 4 yeah that's that's cost Kelly around 2 seconds then to fall behind like that well, Walker is defending thin air here. That's uh, that's not sensible, really. You want to wait until... Here we go, then. This is a replay of Kelly just... Oh, yes, so massive oversteer, but really well done to hold on to it. Yeah, he was lucky not to put that in the wall there. Yeah. But then the pressure as they got to turn four just allowed, uh, allowed Walker through as Kelly ran wide. Yeah, he'd got away with it, and then he just did what Garlic did twice, didn't he, uh, earlier in the race, and that cost him. Yeah. So turn four proving to be the crucial corner of this track. I mean, it is a it's a real challenge that corner. The, the F1 drivers make it look so easy. Lock up there from Walker. Well, Ollie now in the lead of a race for the first. Is this the first time he's led a race? I think it might be. Maybe he's led a GT3. I think he's been in the lead before, but obviously this would be his maiden win if he wins it. Uh, yeah, for sure. But he's, uh, I mean, he's showing strongly here. And he's not like he's, uh, he's not there by fluke, is he? Qualifying fourth on the grid and his pace has been as, as good as anyone else's in this race. Here comes Kelly to the outside then as they come to the centre S. Lap 16 of 17. Walker holds on. But has Kelly got a decent run through the centre S and onto this? This is such a long straight here. Walker again defending to the inside. Good job no one was coming out of the pits there. <laughs> Very true. 
See, I think he's wasting time by defending like that, actually. He might be better off just concentrating on his own lap. Yeah, no, I'd Kelly, agree. Kelly having a look into Ferradura, then practically alongside. That's not an easy corner to overtake on. And then they slam on the anchors down to second gear. Fighting Jesus. for his maiden win, you got to say that there must be a lot of pressure on uh, Walker at this point. Absolutely, yeah. Because it's not just Kelly, there's two other cars behind Kelly that are all within striking distance. Yeah, absolutely, yes. Yeah. So this is a replay then of Merrin Hoogevin from fifth, just losing it through, and that's very easy to do in this car. And I always forget the name of that corner, it's uh, the one after Ferradura. It's like La Nina or something like that. I'll have to uh, ask Roberto Costa for that. I know he did post it in the forum for me, but. <laughs> Here we, Here we go, go on for Kelly. Walker defending right to the pit wall then. Wow, you can hear all the dirt and gravel being thrown up under the car. Into T1 and Walker's got the inside line. That's the final lap they're on now. Wow, so where can he make the move then? At the end of this straight is a good opportunity into turn four. Lakeside descent. And look at that, Namath is closing in as these two fight. Kelly's got to dive to the inside if he's going to make this move stick here. No, he's being patient. He's going to try and interfere with Dura again, I guess. You don't want to be relying on that run from Young Sal on the final lap. So he's on the outside, but he needs to be on the inside. He's going for the cut back. Walker's on covering the, it. Walker's covering early. Not many opportunities left then. This is a maybe on the run up to this right-hander here is a good one. But again, Walker's covering the middle of the road. That's pretty sensible. Wow, Kelly's got a great exit, though. But Young Sal's coming up. Name of look at that, then. He's only half a second off the lead, and there's a car in the middle. Amazing Garlic stuff. must have made so a mistake, because he's dropped back two seconds. Yeah, Garlic, that is. Yeah, so out of Young Sal, then, and on the run up the hill. Here they come. Oliver Walker, we're riding on board, looking back at Gavin Kelly. This is the sprint to the line. Less than a tenth in it. Kelly's gone to the outside, here they come, here comes Namath on the inside, but no, Walker's done it, Oliver Walker has won for the first time, and it's at Interlagos, oh, right, round one. There, Gav. Too, close. Too close to call, great race. Great, great racing, great defending, well done. Congratulations on your maiden win. Yeah, oh, really nice to I think Walker's <laughs> happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's super stuff. And there's uh, Joshka Namath then coming home P3, Ooh. and that's his first podium as well. You messing it up in the pits costume, unfortunately. Yeah, it just got away from me. I thought I'd lost it. I thought it'd gone into the wall. I saved it, though. And Kelly's released. Yeah, very close. Track yeah. 36. Unfortunate. My start was horrendous, but pulled it back. Great racing. On to the next one. On to the next one, indeed. Now, I know Kelly was really upset with last season and not getting a win, but I think he's got to be pretty happy with that second place there. Nearly the victory, and uh, that's showing him strong for the season ahead. Yeah, but of course, Miller and Line were discounted And Santana. And Absolutely. Santana as well, yeah. Okay, so final classification of the race, and Oliver Walker picking up his first victory ahead of Gavin Kelly and Josh Kanema completing the podium. Then we had James Garlick from the Williams team, Merrin Hugovin and Roberto Costa of 5-6 for Otto Esports. And then 7th was Winslade, 8th was Jake Weaver and 9th was Santana. Hey, you can carry on now. <laughs> yeah, championship standings continuing it for me. Then Jason Weaver in 10th, 11th was Larson, White was in 12th, Forrester in 13th, 14th was The Ledge, 15th was Lyon picking up two points, then 16th was Schooling and 17th was Robert Miller with an early retirement. Wow, that was a stonking race though, wasn't it? It certainly was a grandstand finish, I think. Yeah, and look at that then. ETM, though, on the top of the standings. 59 points from Otto Esports, 53. Both those teams benefiting from having two drivers in the race. And the next one down would have been Jägermeister in sixth place. And MMPR. Yeah, MMPR, CC Racing. And Shell Squirrel. Uh, Shell they all had two two drivers as well. We're looking forward to seeing Gary Jones coming back for Barcelona. But I think the uh, line is actually going to be away for that one, so that's going to be intriguing. 
I'll uh, imagine he'll just lend uh, his amazing talent <laughs> for that weekend then. <laughs> yeah. So, next race up, though, will be the sprint race with the reverse grid for the top 12. And as a reminder, you can find us at the Limit of Adhesion.com, Facebook.com slash Limit of Adhesion. Don't forget to like and subscribe the videos and come say hi to us on our happy little Discord. Jules, thanks again for joining me once again. See you next time. Thank you.